TV Photo X1.5 TFX and welcome back to the last part of the Mamiya 645 Pro flash photography tutorial or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> but anyway, this is also a first for me because this is the first time I'm actually now using my new Nikkor 28mm f3.5 as the video lens. So gone is the Vivitar, uh, what was it, 18 to 35 and now it's the uh, little iCore instead that I bought on eBay for a couple of weeks ago. But we'll see the quality. I thought that the, the Vivitar, okay, it's a good, it's a short zoom and so on, but I don't think it's that sharp. So. Yeah, hopefully this Nikkor will uh, do the job be even better, but uh, we'll see how this video turns out. But anyway, this is the Mamiya 645 Pro Flash, uh, and what I'm gonna do is uh, a little bit different from what we usually do. I have my Samsung uh, tablet with me, and on it I have downloaded the scanned images, and I'll just look at them and give you some commentary on the uh, what I thought about him and uh, as well I'll probably put do a little bit like this a couple of centimeters <laughs> so uh, somewhere up here I might have some uh, images uh, in the background or I'll just have it when I <clears throat> yeah we'll see how it goes but anyway I'll, yeah anyway we'll start with the uh, the still life fruit um, you know the banana and the apples so, what should we say about them? Uh, I've taken the artistic liberty, at least, to, uh, you know, do some post-processing editing in uh, Photoshop, or not Photoshop, Lightroom 6, I mean. Uh, but anyway, let's look at the first one here, and what we directly can see here is that we have a lot of shadow uh, on the right-hand side of the photography, and uh, you have some light spots on the apples and the bananas, um, yeah, it could have been a little bit better, but uh, when I tried to rectify this in Lightroom, it turns out that some of the light parts on the banana and the apples, uh, they're, they're too, the highlights are a little bit too sharp, so you can't really do much about it. But this is the first one we did with one, just the one flash, yeah, and uh, if we then change to the second one that I did with the fruit still life. Um, this was when we used two flashes. We used one studio flash, if I'm not miss, uh, you know, if I remember correct, and we also used uh, the Young Nuo speed light, but we used a foil card, a golden foil card to bounce the flash, and that can actually be seen. Uh, if you compare the two images, this second one has a lot more detail from the apples, at least. And the shadowy part on the right-hand side of the photograph, it's still in shadow, but you also have like a soft glow in it. And you can see that on the apples, uh, that uh, while viewing the photo, on the left-hand side, you have the highlights the, when there is almost pure white and on the right side of the apples you have this golden glow to them which was basically the type of effect I was going for. So yeah, this actually turned out pretty nicely for what I was looking for. The bananas um, doing the white balance and so on, I think there is a tiny bit of green tint to them that could have been rectified, but all in all, it really looks as I uh, intended it to be. Uh, what else? Let's uh, move on here. <clears throat> Let's go with the, uh, you know, the crystal decanter that I did as well. This one was not flash photography. Uh, this one was instead ambient light, which meant that I basically tried to turn off as much light as possible uh, in the kitchen where I was uh, doing this and um, I tried to make the background as black as possible uh, while I illuminated the glass decanter or crystal glass decanter with uh, some uh, IKEA, lamp, uh, IKEA bed lights uh, with some LED lighting. And I think this um, half half I would say the thing is that you have to do, if you know your exposure triangle, you know that you have, um, you know, um, 
aperture, ISO and uh, shutter speed. And uh, the uh, 645 by Mamiya, it doesn't have, you know, an infinitely long shutter speed or rather I didn't really have the ability to, uh, you know, do a bulb mode and I, I didn't really feel comfortable at the time to do a bulb mode exposure for this. So also I needed to limit the f-stop a little bit for the camera to use a native shutter speed, so to speak. So I would like this to have become a little bit sharper and, you know, to have it a little bit more defined, but uh, it is what it is and I think it was a cool experiment nonetheless. So yeah. And uh, I like the green uh, that it that it uh, you know came out of because I've been a little bit interested in uh, so-called uh, what is it called Vaseline glass or uh, uranium glass. So it was kind of that look, that uh, green slash yellow tint that I was looking for. Try to replicate it with uh, ambient light, but I think it was the, the colors I really enjoyed. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't have mind to have it a little bit more sharp. Okay, let's move on. What do we have more? We we can have a look at the tulips. Now the tulips, uh, I wanted to have just the flowers, so I have a little bit of the vase still, the, gla the glass vase as well. And I think that this one turned out fairly decently. We used some colored light on this as well. Uh, so the petals and so on, uh, there are some definite, if I'm zooming in on them, there is really great detail and uh, the flowers that are further to the back, they have a softness to them. They're a little bit out of focus while the front ones are more sharply in focus. And if you look at the leaves, the same there that the front ones, you have some definitions, you have some really good detail for the medium that we used and the back ones are a little bit more faded, a little bit softer. So as a still life experiment, I think these flowers actually, it did what I expected them to be. And uh, lastly of the still lifes, it's uh, rather, this was my attempt of doing a uh, old school product photo of the, the Nikon EM. I used that as a, you know, if you look close, I'm zooming in on it, by the way, and when I look at it, the front lens cap, I used the, uh, the Nikon 50mm, you know, uh, lens on the front, uh, the kit lens for this camera, more or less. Uh, the front lens cap, that's soft, but it actually made some really nice uh, bokeh, if you're going to use the term on the front lens because of the texture on it and how the light and the out of focus, how those things combined made that soft effect that also gave us those bokeh orbs in the foreground. And if you look at the leather or rather fake leather that it, the, the camera is wrapped in, um, on the side uh, with the uh, self timer, you get some really nice detail on that fake leather and also the leather strap. <clears throat> also parts of it really nice in focus and uh, some of the parts are a little bit more blurred but that's kind of the thing I was looking for. The only downside I would say that I have my own criticism on this it's that the EM logo on the top of the prism of the Nikon camera, the EM logo wasn't really that good in focus but as a whole I kind of liked it because this was my experimentation with black on black. And uh, speaking on black on black, we can uh, talk about the uh, Metal Gear figurine of uh, or Metal Gear Ryzen, Rising figurine of Raiden. Uh, the first one, which was a basically a thorax picture with the head, I did crop a little bit of the top of the head, which wasn't really my intent, but this was with direct directional light, uh, excuse me. Uh, well, from the side we had the red light with the filter that was a studio strobe and on the top we had the snoot. But I really enjoy how this came out because if you look at the chest plates on the figure, uh, you have this where you see a lot of detail and half of it is red and the other half has a little bit more yellow tint to it and that it's almost like 
the figure is coming out of a shadow and that was a little bit of this you know not really how it, it's that the back part of the figure is less illuminated than the front half of the figure and that's a little bit what I was going for like someone is just stepping out of a shadow that type of effect so that's why the shoulders are you can see that there is something there but you see some detail but it fades into the background and that was a little bit the uh, the thing I was going for and then we have the whole figure that uh, I did you know uh, leveled and uh, here one thing that a lot of photographers uh, who might see this might and I think this is a valid point there is too much headroom on this picture but uh, I would crop that out really but uh, here's the thing if you look at the bottom part of the figures uh, the plate that the figure is uh, anchored to so to speak um, I didn't have that much playroom at the bottom so if I had you know held the camera a little bit further down and I would actually had gone outside of the black back the background paper so th that was a little bit my concern so I can crop the headroom that's no problem uh, but I wanted just this to have a little bit of a discussion around this picture so yes I know the headroom I could have done the, done away with a little bit of that but what I really enjoyed with this picture is that we have almost the same lighting but here you can see a little bit more of the, sh the arms and the shoulders you still have this fading away into the background uh, but you see a lot of detail and um, that's a little bit of a thing I had to play with because there's a really nice uh, comic book uh, book by Scott McCloud that talks about when certain details falls away we actually mentally you know build the rest of the picture in our mind so that's a little bit of the thing that I was going for but uh, anyway the back part that holds the figure up the you know the scaffolding or whatever you want to call it that uh, holds the picture uh, the figure up is a little bit blurred a little bit soft while the figure itself is uh, nice in focus I think I got a really good if you zoom in on the eye the eye was very good in focus so that's a little bit of a thing for portraiture so all in all I really enjoyed this picture because of the lighting and uh, how it turned out uh, overall so yeah really enjoyed it and then lastly of the still lives we have the one where I took some we're gonna do a jump cut here okay sorry about that for phone call uh, sometimes that interruptions happen but anyway let's go for the last still life that I did where I actually put together a little bit of a collection of stuff uh, the first one where we only used one flash I thought that the it's very dull faded and so on I thought about this as having things with different textures and see how it turned out but as you can see they'll we have things like an old uh, uh, Kodak color uh, 35 we have some Kodak uh, Ecta color pro gold 160 ISO and a HP Lovecraft book and everything is on a silk background so you have some different textures that uh, reflects light differently but then I actually have to say that the second one where we introduced some extra light and some yellow light uh, became a little bit better because the book cover for the Lovecraft book has some foil on it uh, the Kodak uh, Ectacolor Pro Gold the gold on that box is uh, gold foil and you had the cigar and the rusty pair of scissors in the background and the cigar cutter which is uh, brushed stainless so as you can see you have a lot of metal type of uh, textures here that um, really ha you know they reflect light in different ways so this was basically a study in the properties of different types of reflections but all in all it was actually a neat experience and uh, a fairly decent picture as well could have used a little bit of cropping because uh, you can see in the upper right hand corner that uh, you can see some of the back wall actually but anyway let's move on 
Well, uh, let's see now. Well, we're gonna see here the selfie. Here was actually me just taking a picture with on-camera flash. And uh, this is something I took from Photorec Toby from a couple of years ago. Uh, I saw that he did a video when he talked about how he did weddings with on-camera flash. And that is that he directed it backwards and a little bit upwards. And that's what I did here. So if you zoom in a little bit on that picture, you can actually read the Mamiya 645 or rather the mirror image of the Mamiya 645 logo. So I would say that the sharpness of this uh, in this picture is uh, fairly decent. The wallpaper is uh, a little bit more soft and the mirror is also a little bit soft because what you have to realize is when I focus this, what it basically becomes is that the focus is not on the same plane as the mirror because you, you can see the mirror frame is uh, out of focus or a little, at least a bit soft. So what I'm actually doing is it's the distance from me to the mirror and then from the mirror to me. So it's actually double the distance that I'm actually focusing on. So that's a little bit of a, you know, a head turner or a mind turner, whatever you want to call it. But this was one of those pictures that I just did for fun. And it also is this with reflective properties and not just, you know, it, when you were a kid and you just took a picture straight into a mirror with flash and everything just turned out white. Well, this is a little bit of that, but in a, a more thought out way, because this time I did it and I used background reflective light uh, to not have this, uh, you know, blown out highlights. And uh, I would say it actually worked. But now a little bit of the pictures that, uh, what should we say? These are actually cropped because with the camera the way it is and uh, trying to do some, it's the self portraits of me. First of all, uh, we have the one where I'm holding and doing the peace sign and um, with a little bit of a bent smile or whatever you want to call it. But anyway, as you can see on the windowsill, a lot of the uh, a lot of the flowers are in deep shadow, and you have a lot of darkness on the right side of the photographs. And uh, this is basically the first where I actually showed that I just have the one studio flash illuminating me in this one. I know that it's a little bit dark and it's a very hard shadow of me on the back wall and so on. But then if you take a look at the second one, because we did two, and on the second one I am also have my shadow is very hard, but if you look at the windowsill, the orchids on the windowsill are very much now in the light and illuminated. That's why we had, as you might remember, and you can go back and look at the original video when we took the picture, that I had two flashes, one studio, studio light, one studio flash and uh, my uh, young Nuo with a soft box on it and they were at 90 degree angles to each other. And that worked very good at this because we didn't get any double shadows for it because the young Nuo speed light was directed to illuminate the windowsill and uh, the studio strobe was meant to illuminate me. So that's a little bit of a, with directional light and how you can illuminate different parts of the image uh, and you still get a decent result. Okay, what do we have else here? Well, let's finish up with the close of the macro of the orchid. Well, I have two of them here and the first one, uh, I did a little bit of flash bracketing if we're gonna put it that way because I um, changed the power setting of the flash uh, from one to the other and um, I would say that the first one has a little bit the white in the white pe petals on the flower is a little bit green in my opinion so the second one uh, where they have a little bit almost a reddish brown tint I actually prefer that one because you have a great definition of the flash of the flower the center of it is uh, at least in my opinion very nice in focus it's sharp uh, so the center parts where I really focused on I, yeah pun intended 
I think that one turned out really nicely uh, for being a, uh, you know, this is still, it's a film photo and uh, I used the macro lens and uh, a ring flash. And I didn't have really the means to get a good meter uh, on it with the uh, Shepard uh, pocket meter. But still, it, it really gave us a nice uh, a result in any case and since the 645 uh, or 6 by 4.5 centimeter negatives they're a little bit they are quite a bit bigger than a 35 millimeter so we have a lot of uh, detail still in this so yeah I think it turned out pretty decently but that's uh, that's basically the photos on that roll of film so uh, yeah it might not be a uh, you know, extreme pro level, but still this was a really great little um, experimentation with flash photography and a medium format camera. So anyway, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX, and I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, as you're supposed to say in this YouTube malarkey, please like, share, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care from now on. Bye.